Today, we're here to answer the question we've all been asking, is ye an alien? Welcome back to Hive Mind Unlimited. Now, a lot of rappers say they're from outer space, but could ye actually be not from this earth? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's weird. For sure. But I don't know if he's from outer space. Yeah, it seems like a stretch. Now, Yeet has hinted at his connection to aliens in the past, but a new interview has just surfaced where Yeet is fully talking about and discussing his encounters with and possibly origin from aliens. <laughs> Let's talk about the interview first, and then we're going to kind of go back through his life and try to see if there's any credence to this take that Yeet might be an alien. Does that sound like a good idea for a YouTube video? <laughs> Let's go. Does this sound like something we should take seriously? <laughs> Let us know. Hive Mind Unlimited. Oh. Truly unlimited. We're not even limited by this galaxy, it no. seems like. Or dimension. I no, don't know. Doesn't matter. So tell me about this interview. He just did his second magazine interview of all time, allowing the German magazine, 032C, access to a muddy field where they took pictures of him and he expounded on his childhood encounter with extraterrestrials. Real quick. 032C is the name of a magazine? A German mag. Why do they call it? That seems like the name of a nonprofit. And we, it's not even the name of the nonprofit. It's like what you have to put on the form. We have more important things to deal with here. Okay, sorry. Like I said, it's his second interview ever. His first one being with Complex in 2022. And this one seems a little more complex than the first. The first one was strange, and the journalist who did the interview for Complex had to do it piecemeal over a long period of time through text, meeting him at the Lyrical Lemonade video, and meeting him at a random warehouse where he was trying on multiple baklavas. Um, <laughs> is it baklavas or balaclavas? Balaclavas, I believe, is the correct term. Right, right, because I was you. imagining him eating Greek pastries. <laughs> But the text portion of that interview came at the very end, and the journalist is just firing away random questions, one of which was, what would you do if you met an alien? To which Yeet responded, I met aliens before when I was 11. They fuck with me. Now, is this an appropriate time for me to ask if that means probing? I believe it is an appropriate time. Okay, so are there any direct references to probing in that interview? There are not. There are so just some simple hints at it, huh? Innuendos. Hinting? At the pro, because they fuck with me. Let's be honest. How would you know an alien fucked with you if they don't look around in your ass? That's one of the few things we know about aliens as just commoners out here. They play around in the buttocks of human beings. And it's a sign of affection. Potentially. I did just want to add that the follow up question to that was, What's the meaning of life? And Yeet responded with, Schmadonka. Schmadonka. Yes. That sounds like something you would say. <laughs> To make up, like, like a, something like you don't really listen to Yeet or know much about Yeet prior to this, and you would say as like a joke word that he would say. I didn't know that he ever said Shmadonka. Shmadonka. It also sounds like what he would say if he collabed with Madonna. He would say, like, I did a song with Shmadonka. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good word. It's not a word. It could be. I saw on Twitter that he said that he doesn't use words, that he only speaks in numbers. Is that true? Did he say that? Yeah. So in the second interview, the journalist there said, most artists I interview when concerned with numbers are thinking followers, are thinking streams, but you seem to have a different relationship with them. And he said, that's right. I don't send addresses. I send coordinates. And when I see those numbers, I just know where it's at based on the equator. Based on the equator, huh? He he only sends coordinates. So he has an extensive knowledge of longitude. And latitude. <laughs> well, he just said the equator. Yeah, true, I mean, He true. didn't say the, uh, what's the other one? The, the prime meridian. Ooh, nice. Yeah, he didn't say that. I was suspicious that they did a pre-interview because why would the interviewer know to ask about his relationship with numbers? Yeah. But if he sent coordinates, that'd be weird. Right. If somebody sends me coordinates, I send back, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> like, legitimately. Yeah. I'm not looking that up. I don't want to say he's waffling here, but he's not all the way bought in on the extraterrestrial stuff. <laughs> it's like sometimes he's very serious about it. Yeah. And he did seem to have this very detailed encounter, which I'll get into in a second. But then other times where maybe it could be related to extraterrestrials, he'll just be like, 
I'm just trying to be different. This is a very, very interesting point in time. And I'm excited to see where this goes with Yi because he is a mysterious artist. And I was kind of confused when people said there was a Yeet interview out there. And I was very pleased when I saw that it was like scanned pages on his subreddit and mm. not like he went and sat down somewhere and did right. an interview on video. The mystery there is what makes him an exciting artist. But this is like, it's almost like he's throwing out the mystery from before and being very upfront about that because there's a more interesting mystery that he's presenting. Yeah. It's almost like uh, when somebody kind of like blows their cover of something that they were doing before because they found a more interesting plot to head down that now the mystery there is like, it doesn't matter if he does interviews. Like he yeah. could go sit on Joe Rogan and talk about this shit and it would still make him a, a mysterious artist. I think that's a great point because in the 032C interview, he takes a lot of photos with the mask off mm -hmm. and he's like a little more forward facing and answers some of the same questions, but in more detail. And I think that is true. Like he gets around by coordinates. He said he has multiple businesses that people don't know about because they are privately held and he doesn't want to deal with shareholders. I did. I read that. I said, I don't want to deal with shareholders. I got all tons of businesses, but they're private. <laughs> Sounds like a guy on cocaine at a bar. Yeah. Somehow I was more surprised by that quote than the alien stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of really surprising quotes in here that kind of shrink the alien stuff down to normal. When asked other things he obsesses over, like his music, he says, I love guns. And he goes into guns, what's your favorite guns? He says he likes the Deagle, he likes the Scar, he likes the Scorpion, all these guns, and he loves customizing them. But he ends that quote by saying, I also like mixies. Now what's a mixie? That was the interviewer's question. Like, a mixed drink? And he says, mm, it could be water and air, vodka and grapefruit. I like all sorts of mixes. <laughs> What, what does that mean? What? <laughs> mixies. Mixies. He said mixie. He said mixies. Mixies. It said mixies. I'll die on that hill. Like a Labrador and a poodle. Yeah. <laughs> Water and air. Vodka and grapefruit. Checks and pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> Go into, let me hear about the alien encounter. Because yes. I have a yeah. lot of questions that are brewing now, but I want to hear about the alien encounter. Okay. The journalist goes, you said you met aliens when you were 11. Can you tell us about that? He says, that was dead ass. That was real. I won't go into too much detail because I'm not sure that they want me to talk about that right now. The aliens. I will say one thing though, they are really tall and look almost human. I remember everything on that night as it transpired second for second. I can tell the difference between dreams and reality and I know I was awake. That's also my first memory. Everything before that feels fake, Sometimes I think I might not even be from here because I have dreams of other planets. My God, we might actually be dealing with an extraterrestrial. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds real to me. Nah, never mind. I, I really wanted to buy in. It's like when your friend tells you that they met aliens. I'm like, all right, let's trace the cord back to the wall here. Yeah. I'd like to hear about it. I'd like to, I'm going to tell you I believe you so that you tell me more. Right. But in my, in my heart, and I have all the respect in the world for Yeet. Yes. I actually quite enjoy his music. You yes. have not quite enjoyed his music as much up to this point. I'm coming around. I want to believe it so bad. Yeah. But this sounds like a lot of stories that I've heard where it's just kind of like a vague thing. A lot of uh, uh, personal credentials try to make himself seem credible. Like, I can tell the difference between dreams and reality. Everything before that was fake. All these things. I'm kind of like, okay. The only interesting thing here to me is that he said they were really tall because everybody right. says they're four feet tall. Yeah, that's like the one detail here that is kind of interesting. And there do seem to be subspecies of extraterrestrials that people have experienced. Little ones, big ones, tall ones, fat ones, funny ones, mean ones, sexy ones. Kind of not so sexy one. <laughs> but Yeet seemed to have an encounter here with really tall ones. I don't like the covering up of details because he doesn't know what they want him to talk about. That implies that maybe they're still in communication. Oh, wait a minute. I just thought about something. Are we going to get a Yeet and Blink-182 song? What? Why would that happen? Because Tom DeLong is the alien researcher. Oh, he did say he wasn't going to do rock music and that he doesn't like rock music. I like one of those things and I'm a little upset by the second part. Right. I don't want him to do rock music necessarily. No. Actually, I kind of feel like a blues album would be fire. He did hint at some country. Oh, okay. I could see that. And referred to himself as a PBR hillbilly. 
There's what this interview is insane. This is oh, the there's best more interview to come. All, there's the more. best interview of all time. There's more. PBR Hillbilly makes so much sense. Isn't he from Port? Well, no, he's from Jupiter or whatever. <laughs> Fuck. Born in Irving, spent his early childhood in Fullerton, California, and then moved to Portland when he was 14, went to high school there. And that's kind of why people say he's from Portland, but spent most of his life outside of LA and lives there now. So he met aliens before he met the people from Portland. I wonder which were weirder. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the Portlanders. Yeah, Portland. Land ears. <laughs> and I also looked up alien encounters in Fullerton, California, and go figure, there's a lot going all the way back to the 50s. So you're saying that gives it more or less credibility? Maybe more. It'd have to be more, right? Yeah. It'd have to be more. Yeah. There's like Air Force pilots in the 50s that saw UFOs. People continuously see UFOs, but a lot of the new ones are discredited by Starlink and like, you know, crazy tech stuff that goes on in California. That place is full of ton of aliens. <laughs> Fuller. That this fuller ton of alien. Uh -huh. Fuller. I'm here kind of for color commentary today. Thanks, man. You're kind of the. You're the I'm the straight man. You're today. the straight man today. You're the researcher. All right. And I am something else. I also wanted to say that in the second interview, post alien question, they say, Did the new album give you any clues into your home planet? And he said, More than I originally imagined. Well, I will say the trailers for the new album are super awesome and crazy. Okay. And have made me so excited for this new album. Kind of like Contagion meets The Matrix sort nice. of vibe and it made me so excited for the album and it makes sense based on what I've seen that he would say that yeah I don't know if it's true but he, that he would say that the part of this quote that I dislike the most is when he says yes I've gotten more clues about my home planet I feel like it has a G in it and maybe a four or a three G34. The weird part for me is that this is an earthly alphabet mm. and <laughs> earthly numerals. <laughs> right. Why would a planet from another galaxy be something G43? That seems a little convenient. <laughs> That's fair, but what about the, the dimensions theory? Dimensions theory, please explain. I can't explain the whole thing, <laughs> but I'm just saying it doesn't have to be another planet like a certain distance away. What if it's like parallel? It's parallel. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, great point. And maybe they use the same alphabet and they're very similar to us, but they had, we had a split off point, nice. you know, and we're one outcome and this dimension's another outcome. Hey. Where I, they're taller. I love it, man. I really do. Yeah. The NBA has got to be awesome over there. Also, just another funny anecdote. When asked people often describe your sound as alien, Yeet says in a longer quote about how he's always being sent futuristic beats and stuff, he says he'll just think of a new style of sound and his producers will send it to him. If I think about it, it happens. I think that just speaks to the synergy between him and Benny X. Yeah, Benny X is mentioned in this and says he gives him his craziest stuff. But he goes on a little further to explain the powers of his manifestation and master plan. What is his master plan? He doesn't even know. Oh, but it'll be fed to him from his home planet, G43. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Lil Wayne is from Mars, apparently. Yeah, says. that makes sense. That though. totally makes sense. That's an earthly alphabet and there's no one from Mars yeah. ever. But, <laughs> well, maybe. We don't know. Yeet, it's harder to wrap my head around because I just don't know about this planet and I'd love to learn more about it. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who doesn't like social media, loves shooting guns, loves mixies of all kinds, and making words up. And he's a PBR hillbilly. Yeah. Is there anything else we should know about or be excited about? The backlog of music seems astounding if we are to take his words at face value. Okay. Which obviously is drawn into question <laughs> with some of these quotes here. I guess other interesting things about him, he doesn't really listen to new music, kind of for the classic reason a lot of new artists don't. He says, if you spend too much time listening to other rappers, you'll subconsciously start sounding like them. And so a lot of his favorite music is old ass shit. Let me guess, Johnny Cash. He said between the 1880s and 1960s, and actually one of his favorite songs is from the 1700s. I did see that quote. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. One of my favorite songs is from the 1700s. That's like taking the music snub <laughs> to a whole new level. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't know my favorite artists. They're like blues musicians who never... No, no, no. <laughs> my favorite artists are stuff that was recorded on clay in <laughs> Egypt <laughs> in 142 BC. <laughs> it's more of a chant. It's like si it's six monks in, in a chapel, and it was recorded... <laughs> <laughs> on a wheel. <laughs> like you said earlier, I didn't come into this research or reading these interviews being the biggest Yeet fan. His moment on the Drake album was really cool for me. Yeah. And I'm learning to really love Benny X's production and 
his ability to layer vocals and ad libs into songs and kind of transform what I feel like a lot of artists will get just as a cool beat. He'll enhance it so much with all these little vocal moments in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see the layers that make him so interesting. And now getting a glimpse into this ridiculous character, I'm leaving this research with a lot more appreciation for him and excitement for the new album. I'm leaving it with lots of curiosity. Yeah. That's really what it is, is like he was already one of those artists who you have to lean forward and be like, what's going on here right but also there's a lot of people who don't and that's fine it's very like atmospheric fun music to listen to it's super layered it kind of reminds me of like when travis scott first came out it was like more about the sound that's drawing you in but to me i was already curious but i'm excited to see that develop yeah travis scott didn't ever really develop that character into much of anything Mm -hmm. and it seems like we've got someone here who is gonna throw us for a loop Yeah. Or just someone who's not a person. It's like the reclusiveness, I think, of his character in an age or time where everyone is so like engaged on social media. That is really interesting for me, at least with him, because it seems like his like ingenuity comes from a place of like tuning out and like just sitting at home in the studio and making whatever he wants based on apparently a pretty insane life or a normal life and a big imagination. Yeah. And either way, that's exciting to me. Yeah. I'm into it, man. I I don't know if Yeet is from here or not, but I'm pro-immigration, so I've got to uh, gotta say I'm uh, welcome. <laughs> we hope you enjoy our planet. Yes. And uh, I, I hear great things about your home planet, uh-huh. and uh, we're happy to have you here. So uh, you're welcome. What is ours is yours, Yeet. And what is Shmadanka? <laughs> Shmunkum. <laughs> Psychedelics made me think different. I just read that quote. Is that from, that's from the new interview? That was from the original interview. Oh, okay. Said he started experimenting with psychedelics when he was in high school. And never mind, this whole thing's bullshit then. And that's what made him believe he could do anything and led to his music career. That's cool and everything, but I, I just, now I think maybe his brain's just mush. Yeah, I, yeah, that's why I thought it was an important quote to put in there because yeah. we're dealing with someone who experimented with psychedelics as a teen who then said they had their first memory at 11 and that wasn't an alien encounter and now they like mixed drinks and guns and yeah, coordinates. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> maybe his brain is mush and that's what makes the music so gooey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all this, I only know two things to be true. One, I'm excited for Yeet's new album. And two, I'm about to get really into mixies. <laughs> but I'd like to know, what do you guys think? Do you think Yeet's from space? Yeah. <laughs> do you think this is all made up? Are you excited for Yeet's new album? And does this make you like his music more or less? And I want to know if any of you out there have had any encounters with extraterrestrials too. Please comment them below in full. (laughs) Yes, please comment your alien encounters and don't make them up. We want to hear real ones. We're trying to get the bottom of all this. (laughs) We're like the X-Files. So whether you're watching this from Earth or from G43 or any other coordinate that you're at right now, we appreciate you for watching. This is Hive Mind Unlimited, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.